Hey guys, welcome to the 18th part in this Python series on the Django Web Framework. In this one, as I mentioned in the last video, we're going to be talking a bit more about the forms, uh, specifically the form called the user change form, form in Django, and it allows you to edit the data stored in the default Django user model. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. To do that, I first need to create that URL because I don't want to create it on the profile page itself. I'm going to create another page so that the user can edit their profile on, uh, separately to viewing their information. So I'm going to do forward slash edit and that's going to be the URL that I need to define to be able to get them to edit their profile. I'm going to put, I'm going to redirect them there. Uh, maybe I could put like an edit button on here and redirect them to profile forward slash edit. So to do that, I'm going to define another URL and I'm going to say it's going to be the URL function again, it's the regular expression so it's going to start and then it's going to be profile forward slash edit and then it's going to end so this is going to be views dot edit profile I guess we should probably call the other one view profile just because it's a bit more logical and uh, the name is going to be equal to view, uh, sorry, edit profile. And just for consistency, I'll call that view profile. And because we renamed the other one, I'm just going to rename it to uh, view profile. So that, that that should still work. So if we go to account profile, uh, so of course that doesn't work because I haven't defined the view yet. So I'm just going to do just to be able to test that the renaming here works, I'm just going to define that view so that it knows that it exists. So it's going to take request and I'm just going to say uh, pass. Let's see if that works. I think you might have to return something, but let's see. So that seems like it's going to run. Okay, so that works. So, so we know that uh, just rename that, that worked fine. But now I want to get to the edit page. So we should have the URL defined and it should go to this function but it won't do anything yet because we just said pass in other words don't do anything just just continue on and so we get that error because as I sort of aforementioned uh, it needs to return something and it's going to return a render object which is going to render the template just like this view but I'm also going to use the default form to be able to edit the user model. As I said, it's called the user create form, so I'm going to import that from the uh, forms. So django.contrib.auth.forms import user change form. So that's the name of the form in that uh, in that Django forms directory. So I'm going to say if request.method. So remember, there's two different scenarios that we have to account for. One is going to be the client's web browser is going to make a get request to that page. So it wants to get the page initially from the web server, which is where our Django code is running. And the other scenario is where it's already got that information and then it's filled in the form, the user has entered in their information that they want to submit, and then when they press that, press that submit button, they're going to post the data back to the web server. So the post method is going to be sending that data back to the web server, and that's what we're going to account for. And then we're going to say else, and then that would be uh, the get method, so it's going to be one of those two. So I'm going to, pretty much like we have up here, I'm going to do a similar sort of thing. I'm going to say form is equal to user create form. So user change form. I don't know why I keep calling it create form. Uh, user change form, and it's going to have request dot post. So it's going to take that post data so it's able to save uh, the information that the user has entered. It knows what the information is that the user has entered uh, when we pass in that request dot post, and I'm also going to. And I'm also going to say in this one, unlike up here, I'm going to pass in the user instance so that it knows uh, the user object. So request.user and 
then I'm going to just do the same as this. So if form dot is valid, I'm going to say form dot save and return redirect and I'll just uh, redirect it to forward slash account forward slash profile. So when they save that uh, data that they've submitted using the form, it, that it's going to redirect them to the profile page where they should hopefully see that updated information. So that's all for the uh, post part and I'm going to say else, so this block is going to be accounting for the get which is just going to initialize that blank form. So I'm going to say form is equal to the user change form and it's going to still pass in that instance so instance is equal to request dot user now I'm going to return that data so I need to define that dictionary which is going to have the form in it because we need to be able to have access to that form in the template otherwise the user simply won't see it and then what we're going to do is do the familiar render method function and I'm going to say request is oops so inside the parentheses request uh, the template name so I haven't actually created this template yet what I'm going to do is do uh, accounts forward slash uh, edit profile dot html and I'm going to create that as well in a second I need to pass in that dictionary so args just like that uh, now I'm going to create uh, I'm just going to duplicate this profile page and actually just so that we've got that extends I'm going to say edit profile and so we can work from this we don't need this part but instead what I'm going to put in here is the form so it's going to be a post method and all I need to put in here is going to be the if you remember every form we need uh, to make it secure to send data to and from the web server we need that cross-site request forgery token it's just a security thing and Django actually will give you an error if you don't use it properly so I guess I could just show you that if I don't include the uh, token to start with if I do form dot as paragraph. So now without that CSRF token I'm going to create a button to try to submit this form. I'm going to say the type is submit and I don't really need the name for now but I do need the uh, text on the button just to distinguish it. I'm going to call it the submit button and if I go back to the browser and refresh that we get a submit button at the bottom here. It's right next to the bottom. I'm just going to add a break in there. so it's comes off off the bottom a little bit and now we get that submit button so now what this submit button is going to do when we click that it's going to send all the data in this form through a post request uh, to the development server running in in the terminal here to uh, the Django server which is then going to process process that request in the view and uh, run it here so we should get this redirect if everything goes well but if I, let's say I change this form and I try to submit the data we get CSRF verification failed request aborted and that means that we haven't made our site secure enough we're, we're not submitting that data securely and I can show you in fact what the CSRF token is if we do, uh, if we go back to the form template and we can do if I print it out as a variable we can see CSRF token and if I refresh the page now we see this is actually the token itself so this is what's being submitted along with the post request to make sure that it's not being copied by some malicious Python script which actually isn't our website is instead some hacker trying to hack into our web server and send malicious data and do nasty things but having this there means that it's very very hard for them to do that as opposed to it being kind of easy before so 
to actually submit this as part of the post request instead of printing out as a variable, because clearly that's not very useful if it's just printed out to the screen and not submitted with the post request. Instead, I'm going to change it to these little percent signs uh, to say, right, I'm going to submit this data with the post request instead of printing it out as a variable on the screen like I am with the form. So, I'm going to refresh this, and now we don't see that, and that's because it is still in the page, but it's going to be submitted if we change the data. So now, if we change the data here and press submit, we sent that post request, and now we can see that the it redirects us to forward slash account forward slash profile, and it changes our last name to gobbledygook. So I think in the next one, we're going to look at changing this form because there's too much information here we don't want to show them all of this information like at the moment they can choose if they're staff or not and if their accounts active or not and we only want to show them their most relevant information so what I'm gonna do is write a custom form that inherits from the user change form and is condensing this information down is gonna simplify it so that they only see what they actually need to see rather than just everything that we have access to in the user admin. 